Hi guys, today I'm going to show you the GoTo Tags Encoder. The GoTo Tags Encoder is for companies that need to quickly and reliably encode and verify a large quantity of NFC tags. The encoder software has been designed with almost two years of encoding experience by BuyNFCTags.com to provide the optimal workflow and features needed for your NFC encoding projects. The encoder supports a wide range of NFC tags and readers, allows for fast encoding, validates the encoding data, and allows you to import and export the encoding data and results. This results in reduced encoding lead times, reduced encoding errors, and generally simplifies the encoding process. GoToTags is continually upgrading the software with additional features to improve the encoding workflow and support additional NFC tags and readers. Now let's get right into it. Here's what you'll need. A Microsoft Windows PC, the GoToTags encoder application, which you can download from gototags.com, the application license, NFC reader, and NFC tags, which can all be purchased from buynfctags.com. For more information, please see the gototags.com website. Now, let me show you the user interface. First, I'm just going to close the app and reopen it. And I'm just going to maximize the screen. So up top we have the file menu and the help menu. So clicking on documentation will bring you to the GoToTags documentation page where you can view technical details and examples. Support will get you to the GoToTags support forum where if you have any questions you can post it onto the forum. And if you need to buy NFC tags or NFC readers just click on shop for NFC and you'll get to buynfctags.com. This is the license window. The GoToTags encoder software is licensed per encoding computer, so the license will only work on that specific computer. My software already has a license, but if you don't have a license yet, you must first purchase one on buynfctags.com. Here we can select the NFC reader we want to use. I have both the ACR122U and the Argon reader attached to my computer. I'm just going to select the Argon reader. As I mentioned earlier, the GoToTags encoder supports a wide range of NFC readers. Now I'm just going to show you how to set up the encoding. I'm going to name the encoding file, encoding file. This encoding file is used to define the data to be encoded onto the NFC tags and to support the encoding workflow. Notice the different tabs at the bottom, website, text, dcard, email, phone, SMS, and URI. These are all the different record types that we can encode. Also notice that in each of these tabs there are generic columns. The read only, identity, and notes. Read only is if you want to make the tag permanently read only. Identity is a unique value for each NFC tag. It's used to correlate the encoding with the actual printed data. This column is act not encoded onto the tag and it's not required to be filled out. Notes are for the operator, such as bad printing on the tag. This column is also not required to be filled out and won't be encoded onto the tags. Now I'm going to show you how to create some website records. Notice here that the HTTP is missing. And notice I put HTTPS in this link here. And now I'm going to create a really long URL. And let's say you want to create a uh, sequential URL. So let's see. You would have to use Excel's uh, fill handle tool to just drag this down and it'll generate the numbers for you. Now we can go back and we can make buy NFC tags read only by typing true. 
Now I'm just going to close the Excel file and save it. So back in the app, let me just give you an overview of the workspace. So I'm just going to refresh the encoding file. So one of the tags are invalid. Encoding cannot start until all tags are valid. So this tag here is invalid. Um, the reason is that the URL is not valid because we didn't have the HTTP in it. Let me just talk about each of these columns. So the number here just describes the number of the tag to identify the tag. Status shows the status of the tag, whether it's valid or not. And if there are any errors, it's shown in the message column. Record type is the type of record that we're going to encode, so we're going to encode website. And this is the record, this is the actual data that's going to be encoded. So if I just hover over, you can see that I'm going to be encoding a URL. Also notice that I can just click on the link and it'll perform the action. So if I click on this, it'll open up buynfctags.com. There we go. And here's the read only column. And notice, remember, I made buynfctags.com read only. Identity, I didn't put anything into the identity. For nodes, we can put in nodes while we're encoding. So let's say I notice that this tag, number two, was not printed correctly. So I can just double click and put in a comment. Oops, number two. So I can put in bad printing. And UID, um, once you encode, the encoder will capture the UID and put it in here, and it also capture the type of tag that was used, such as MyFair Ultralight, the end tag, or Covio. Here's the NFC chip selector tool. The, the list of NFC chips that show up in the dropdown is based on the reader that was selected. Only the NFC chips that are supported for the selected reader are shown. If a specific NFC chip type is selected, the tag's data length will be validated based on the capacity of that chip. And also, it will validate during the encoding process that only that NFC chip can be used. If any NFC chip is selected, there will be no validation of the data length or that the correct NFC chip is being used during the encoding process. So here's an example. I'm going to select MyFair Ultralight. The really long google.com URL is now invalid. The tag's data length, 69, is greater than the capacity of the MyFair Ultralight chip. And now I'm going to select the end tag. Notice now that the long google URL is now valid. Here, now I'm going to show you how to edit the encoding file. Just click on the link at the very bottom. And I'm going to change google.com. And I'm also going to fix apple.com. And I'm going to save. Now I'll need to click on the green refresh button so that the app can pick up the changes. Notice now that apple.com and google.com are now fixed. Now let's start the encoding process. So here's the start button, the pause button, and the stop button. So I'm just going to hit the start button now. And it says some of the tags are read only. Are you sure you wish, are you sure you want to start encoding? And I'm going to click yes. <laughs> Now I'm going to use a locked tag. So it gives me an error that NFC tag is read only. So I can't use this locked tag to encode. Let's continue. There we go. And this next tag, it's a MyFair Ultralight. So the app won't let me use this tag because I selected end tag at the very beginning.
Now I'm just going to pause. The timings here at the bottom, it shows the total encoding duration and the average time per tag. And you can also view the tag counts on the bottom right. Notice that I encoded only 4 out of the 14 tags. The encoding process can be split up into multiple sessions by saving the tags file and reopening it later. Here's the button to save it, and here's the button to re-import the encoding file. Now let's continue encoding. NFC tag encoding is now complete. Notice that the UIDs have all been filled out when the tags were encoded. And also the type of tag, um, the end tag 2 or 3, has also been filled out. Now I'm going to save the encoding results. And I'm just going to call it encoding results. So this is going to open up the Excel file with the data. So the status, the record type, the record that was encoded, the UID, and the tag text. So this is all saved for you. This is the exact same as the application. And this encoding results file is useful to send to the end customer to show the encoding the results. If you want to restart the encoding process with the same encoding data, all you have to do is hit this restart button. Notice the, the status has been changed back to added instead of encoded, and the UID and the tag text have been cleared. Now let's say you want to reset the encoding process. You just click this button here. This will reset everything. Notice that the screen is clear now. If you're interested in the GoToTags encoder, a limited trial of the encoder can be given to prospective customers. Additional information can also be found on GoToTags.com. Thank you for watching.